fine. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of What's Going On. I'm your host, Tom D'Ambra. As always, we're very thankful you take the time from your busy day to watch our program. Uh, my friends, we have a tremendous amount to get into, and I do want to continue our um, uh, short expose on weather modification, uh, especially seen from last week. We have two other hurricanes now that have been formed and are targeting um, uh, the Caribbean islands, uh, Leeward Islands, all the way up and potentially into, into the east coast of the United States. Uh, before we get into that, though, just a couple of quick things I want to get into. Do you remember when we went into Iraq, when I say we, when they sent us into Iraq on a plethora of lies and disinformation. You remember that? Weapons of mass destruction? Do you remember George Bush at, at that big fundraiser he had? And, and, and they're all laughing. Everyone's having a big laugh on this because they knew the whole thing was a joke to begin with, to get you to send your sons and daughters to go fight for the corporations in the Middle East. But do you remember how we were going to sell that, they were going to sell that war to you? Part of the program was this. Don't worry, your taxes aren't going to go up because we're going to take the, the profits from the oil that we're going to go in at gunpoint and take from, from the people. And we're going to put them into the general budget so the, the mechanisms and the hardware of war will be made by the profits of the oil that we're going to take from the Iraqi people at gunpoint. And that was okay with the American people. After all, warfare now in this country is a very nice, clean thing. You see the nice little missiles on TV blow up the buildings, you don't hear the cries, you don't smell the blood, you, none of that. Warfare in the United States has been cleaned up tremendously. But, as we know, there was no weapons of mass destruction, and now we find out through the Journal of Oil and Gas. Basically, what this journal does, my friends, is they keep track of every aspect of the petroleum industry, from profits to who's producing what to who's refining what, all of it. Let me get to this real quick. Big oil, since we went into Iraq, has received 82.8% of the oil that they sold to you and I was going to go to the profits, and then our taxes wouldn't go up. So when you break this down even more, my friends, Listen, see if you recognize any of these names. Exxon Mobil got 22.7%. British Petroleum got 20.6%. Luke Oil got 20%. And Shell got 19.5% for 82.8% of all the oil that was taken from the Iraqi people have gone to big oil. The rest of it, my friends, was an agreement that was made with the provincial government of Iraq that we put in, and that's how we paid them off. So how much of this went to you and I on the promise of this, that we, that we, our taxes would not go up? And the American people had the gall to even accept this, to think of that's where we are as a nation, that we would accept going into another land, which has done nothing against us, bomb them, maim them, and then it's all okay because we're not going to have to pay for it. We deserved everything we got on this one, my friends. Deserved it all. Okay, real quick. I do wish to continue with this weather warfare system. We showed you a couple of these pictures last week. Um, this is the uh, site, the hop site that we showed you in, in Alaska. Notice the diapole antennas. And we're going to get into a little bit of this now. Um, this was the method of apparatus for altering a region in the Earth's atmosphere, ionosphere, and or meganosphere. Uh, it's worth mentioning that Eastland APTI patents were based on the research of Yugoslav scientist Nikolai Tesla. Uh, and and I, I'm not going to read all 40-something pages here, my friends. I'm going to get right to the highlights. Okay. Raytheon, which acquired APTI's weather war technology and E-Systems, was bought, bought out by Raytheon. 
uh, was at that time the fourth largest U.S. military contractor. Through this money-spinning acquisition, Raytheon became the largest defense electronics firm in the world. And we, may, we meanwhile, excuse me, Arco, which has sold APTI to E-Systems, had itself been acquired by BP Amico Oil Consortium, thereby integrating the largest oil company in the world. You know it as British Petroleum. Raytheon, through its East System subsidiary, now owns the patents used to develop the hop weather systems. Okay, my friends, I am going to skip, a, I just want to get into some dates here. Uh, Burton on Eastland, 1997 interview, described this antenna array as the largest ionospheric heater ever developed. That's 1997, my friends. Okay, I'm going I'm to skip that page. Uh, then we come back to... Uh, the Office of Naval Research to BAES. Now, BAES, my friends, is another conglomerate. It's British Aerospace Systems, which had been developed in the initial installation of an antenna array in the early 1990s. So now we're back from 97 into the early 1990s. This is how long this technology has been going on. The contract, uh, excuse me, let me back up, the Office of Naval Research to BAES in 2003, through which U.S. subsidiary BAE Systems Re uh, Advanced Technologies Incorporated, the contract was signed two months before the Anglo-American invasion of Iraq. Using Raytheon's technology, BAES was to develop the HOP ionosphere research instrument to its maximum capabilities of final IRI, and that's the FIRI. All right, let's skip down here. Uh, and by the way, my friends, I was going to get into this, but I'm not going to get into it too much right now. Real quick, do you remember how I said to you there was thousands and thousands and thousands of troops, Iraqi troops, that just surrendered without firing a bullet? And when our soldiers uh, got to them, they, it, when you study this, you'll see that these people were in a hypnotic state. They were traumatized psychologically to, to read some of the words that, that have come up about this. And what this is, my friends, is this was part of the HOP system that BAE Systems, two months before we were in there, put into place. This is why we were able to take the Iraqi Defense Forces, the fifth largest army in the country, in the world at that time, excuse me, uh, in a matter of days. Okay, so let's, let's continue. Uh, 2000. And four, there's 132 cross diapole antennas at uh, the Alaskan Hop facility brought into full array. Um, and then uh, we get into that a little bit. That's again through Raytheon BAE Systems. Um, and then uh, BAE Systems, uh, based out of uh, Jersey, Defense Electronics DRS Technologies with $11.5 million outsourcing arrangement to build high frequency radio transmitter for other foreign hop antenna arrays. Okay, and, and by that was completed in June of 2004. July of 2006, uh, hop is no longer described as a research project. The production of the transmitters was entrusted to ERS C-141 Command Control Communications Computers and Intelligence Group. That's the C-4I group that we have mentioned to you in previous shows. Uh, let us continue. A 48-ray antenna was uh, supported through a six-transmitter tra uh, cabinets. So they have made this thing now. They really, uh, by 2006, had really taken this from 1990 to 2006 into a more portable fashion to be set up. And then we're going to, I'm going to skip that for the sake of time. I'm very, very sorry. Um, this is from, I found this, uh, this is in 2003. They have multiple um, hop facilities set up in Greenland and Norway uh, and other facilities. The biggest one, my friends, and the most multiple ones now are off the coast of Africa. Where are all of these super storms originating from, my friends? off the coast of Africa. Okay, when these facilities are launched into space from Norway, Alaska, and Greenland, a closed contour will be created with a truly fantastic integral potential for influencing the near-Earth medium. 
the USA plans to carry out large-scale scientific and military experiments under the HOP program and not controlled by any global community. That we will create weapons capable of breaking radio communication lines and equipment installed on spaceships and rockets, provoke serious accidents in electricity networks and in oil and gas pipelines, and have a negative impact on, listen to this, on the mental health of people populating entire regions. My friends, that was a report from the Duma in Russia in August 8th, 2002. Uh, okay, I'm going, to I'm going to stop here. Now we get into this. There's a graph here, my friends, that I'm not going to have time to get over, go over with you. Uh, but what I am telling you is the IRI, uh, which is currently, this is as a June of 2004, composed each station of at least 48 antennae elements of a power capacity of 960,000 watts minimum. The HOP was built out, is jointly funded by the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Navy, and the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. And you must know that if you watch this program. We mention them many times. The acronym is DOPPER. Okay, um, then we're going to get into... Real quick, U.S. Aerospace Forces now own the weather by capitalizing on emerging technologies and focusing development of those technologies to war fighting applications from enhancing friendly operations or disrupting those of the enemy. Who is the enemy? We've read in this document many, many times, the enemy, the enemy, the enemy. Who's the enemy, my friends? Who is the declared enemy of the USA Insolvent Corporation government? You and I. The Trading with the Enemies Act of 1933, the definition of enemy is citizens of the United States or those under the jurisdiction of the United States. That's the definition of enemy, my friends. Let us continue. From enhancing friendly operations or disrupting those of the enemy via small scaling tailoring of natural weather patterns to complete dominance of global communications and counter space control. Weather modification offers the warfighter a wide range of possible options to defeat or coerce an adversary. In the United States, weather modification will likely become part of the national security policy, both domestically and with international applications. Our government will pursue such a policy depending on our interest at various levels. How do you like that? Weather patterns in North Korea, uh, I'm, I'm, actually I'm not going to get into all this. The unusual climate occurrences in the United States and Western Europe have been extensively documented. And then of course they get into the weather in Iraq, Iran, Syria, North Korea, Cuba, China, Russia. This is three, four pages of unnatural, not unnormal, abnormal, I should say, weather patterns since the 90s, including five-year droughts, seven-year droughts, hurricanes off seasons, stronger than usual storms. The six countries I just mentioned, my friends, are all what? At least what they try to sell to you and I, adversaries of the United States. Let us continue. Okay, then we get into unusual occurrences in Afghanistan and Iraq prior, just prior, years prior, two or three and four years prior to the United States invading these countries. Recurrent flooding and drought often in the same year has hit North Korea since 95, killing at least 220,000 people and ensuing famine. Okay, then we get into how they raise the temperature of the water in the rice fields above 40 degrees and what happens to the plants because they, they don't go into this dormant stage they need to. We get into the weather in Afghanistan three years before we went into the worst drought ever recorded in Afghanistan affecting the food, pop, the food growth. Um, then we get into the severest drought in eastern Cuba, has eroded 40% of the farmland, which is the prime farmland of Cuba, starved thousands of heads of cattle, and is uh, close to killing over 4 million people, counting every drop of water they consume. The drought has robbed underground water levels at some 10 feet over the past 10 years, leaving documented over 5,000 wells across this one province alone dry. 
Okay, uh, folks, again, I, I, for the sake of time, I don't, I don't want to get into too much more of this. Afghanistan and all the former Soviet republics of Central Asia, uh, they get into from 1999 to 2001, the, the, the drought that took place, all right, D decimated the food supply. And you're going to say to me, oh, come on, Tom, we went into Afghanistan because some guy in a cave orchestrated the, the biggest attack, terrorist attack against the United States. That's why we were in Afghanistan. Yeah, he was living in a cave with no electricity, no satellite communications, in Bora Bora, Afghanistan. Yet, he needed dialysis twice a week. Rather interesting, isn't it? Anyway, so anyway, in, uh, in the wake of the in the wake of the U.S.-led invasion, the United States supplied Afghanistan with gene genetically modified wheat and appropriate types of fertilizers to be used with the G gen genetically modified wheat, which was said to be high-yield drought-resistant. Now, my friends, Monsanto comes into play. Okay. Like Afghanistan, Chazakistan has had its infrastructure ruined by prolonged civil war with Muslim fundamentalists. Since then, the worst regional drought in over 74 years has destroyed the food crops over a large portion of the nation, rendering almost half of the 6.2 million people in the country vulnerable to the threat of famine and disease, up from 3 million last year, about the only portion of the economy that's, uh, that has been unaffected since the United States' arrival in this part of the world is the drug trade. Yay! Why? Because we secured the Golden Triangle, uh, excuse me, the Golden Crescent. We secured the Golden Triangle in the 70s and the 60s in Southeast Asia, and we con that was the second biggest production of the poppy plant, which produces heroin. And the biggest in the world was the Golden Crescent, and that was the second area that we went into and secured. So the only, the, non, the only industry, the only part of the economy in Afghanistan that has not been detrimentally affected, actually has prospered since our arrival, you got it, is the poppy population. Okay, folks, I'm going to stop here. Uh, just for the sake of time, i got so much to get, get into, um, but I want to go through this with you one more time. This is the inside. Of, if you look at this, my friends, this looks like a um, typical commercial airliner that has been outfitted, uh, obviously, with canisters, large canisters for spraying uh, aerosols uh, into, the, into the atmosphere. And this is what we know as chemtrails. Okay, and here's another picture, and I thank Bill for getting all these, um, of more canisters that you see, a, you know, you see a 747 fly over your house and you think nothing of it. Well, my friends, here you go. Here's what's inside these 747s in a lot of cases. And here's a, an up, uh, a really a good printout here of the different uh, the mechanisms, if you would, of how the disbursement, the, the um, aluminum dioxide and the... And, uh, Boroxide, all these different things that have been clinically proven to be in these chemtrails um, is actually put out as a dispersing agent into the air. Uh, really incredible, my friends. Uh, Washington's New World Order weapons have the ability to trigger climate change. Okay, this is from, uh, I started reading a little bit of this uh, last week, and I just want to get something real quick here. World-renowned Scientist Dr. Roselli Bertrell confirms that the U.S. Milita military scientists are working on weather systems as a potential weapon. The methods include enhancing of storms and the diverting of vapor rivers in the Earth's atmosphere to produce targeted droughts, floods, or storms. What year do you think that is? 1970. Technology will make available to the leaders of major nations techniques for conducting secret warfare of which only a bare minimum of the security forces need be appraised. Techniques of weather modification will be employed to produce prolonged periods of severe droughts or storms. That, my friends, was written in 1970. Think of that. Think of that. Okay. 
I found this, and I'm going to have to stop here, my friends, uh, just because for the sake of time. But what you have to understand is this. This unusual weather, Hurricane Harvey bouncing back and forth like ricochet rabbit, Katrina going up to the Ohio Valley and then back out to the, to the ocean. None of the, this never happened in weather before, ever. What's taking place, my friends, is this is asymmetrical warfare now being turned into symmetrical warfare. And the reason why they're doing this, my friends, is because the global elite are desperate. The rise of nationalism, not just in this nation, but throughout the world, has, it's an ideal whose time has come. And the, it, has, it has been since the inception of man that the ideal has come, but we lost the ideal through deception and disinformation, through the globalists taking control of the three major mind-manipulating aspects they have to offer. The public fool system, the 501c3 churches, and the mainstream media. Well, they're, they're, all three of these entities have lost credibility, all of them. They've all less credibility. People are leaving the public schools in droves. The mainstream media has a 6% credibility rating. And the 501c3 churches are really, besides these big conglomerate churches, they're hurting. The Catholic Church is finally being exposed for what it actually is. And I'm not talking about the, the local priest, the local monsignor. I'm talking about the deputy pope who's just been arrested because he had pedophilia sex with hundreds of little boys. He had drug parties where they were snorting cocaine and having sex with underage boys. The, the Catholic Church is being exposed for when they took known pedophilia and put them in other parishes without telling anybody, without having anyone punish anybody, without even following the law of this country and registering them as sex offenders. Did anyone go to jail? Absolutely not. They're all part of the three entities of disinformation and mind control. So they're losing this. Trump is a result of them losing the control and other people doing their research, other people getting off the couch and doing research. Shows like this and many, many others throughout the country. So I found this in the congressional record. This is the Tri-State Natural Weather Association. Listen to this. Is a, this is a small area, my friends. This is New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Very small area. One. Cloud seeding has been responsible for the great five-year drought in the Northeast United States. Two, isolated sections of the Northeast have experienced 18 years of drought due to cloud seeding. Weather disturbances in the South Atlantic have been eliminated and or reduced on the East Coast to reduce the East Coast rainfall by 30%. The average dairy farmer on the East Coast living in an area of cloud seeding has averaged a net financial loss because of cloud seeding. Crop production losses in Franklin County, Pennsylvania alone have amounted to $50 million. My friends, wait till I tell you what year this is. When effects of seeding wear off, cloud bursts occur, causing floods, destroying crops, buildings, and drowning people as well as livestock. Seeding has been responsible for serious air pollution problems. Mental retardation and insanity are traceable to cloud seeding chemicals. Poisoning of all living matter is directly related to cloud seeding. Emphysema is three times higher in areas of heavy cloud seeding. Cancer is virtually out of proportion. Financial losses of agriculture and related industries run into the billions. Forest trees as well as cultivated orchards are dying from chemical reactions taking place in the air due to the addition of cloud seeding agents. The atmosphere has been rendered completely biological, incompatible with all living matter. That's 1973. 1973. What do you think is going on since they got 
the 84 hop stations throughout the world playing with the ionosphere. My friends, I read it to you last week. They can create, control, divert, direct, or eliminate any weather pattern they decide to develop or eliminate or direct or control or divert. This is how Harvey bounces around like ricochet rabbit. This is how Katrina goes out to the Ohio Valley and then back out. This is how we have our fourth major hurricane of category fours and fives. Never happened before in the history of hurricanes. Why? Because there is warfare being waged against the American people and this is part of what's now gone from asymmetrical to symmetrical warfare. Okay, let us continue here, my friends. Uh, this, is, this is actually 70 news. Hillary Clinton ties, donated 800,000 to her super PAC, which funds Antifa. This is the article originated with 70 News, was carried by the Daily Caller out of London. Uh, my friends, I, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm going to read this real quick. According to the Federal Election Commission documents, Hillary Clinton transferred $800,000 from her failed political campaign, Hillary for America, to her new super PAC, Onward Together. You like these words, Hillary for America, Onward Together, before she announced the existence of the PAC in May of 2017. Amid other disturbing details, it has now been revealed that Onward Together is a 501c4 social welfare organization, which means that it is not required to disclose many of the details of its operations to the public or to even disclose who its donors are. By receiving the campaign funds and then furnishing the funds to Antifa terrorist groups, Clinton has implicated many of her support as a criminal. I totally agree. So Hillary Clinton giving funds to Antifa. All right, let us continue. Folks, you probably could say this isn't going to affect me, but this is just another chip and off the block, another piece of the puzzle, another nail in the coffin, for the petrodollar. Headline, this is from Northwest Liberty News. Actually, you can find this in the Wall Street Journal. You can find this all over the world. Venezuela has officially, officially, excuse me, abandoned the petrodollar. So I guess my question would be, let me see. Iraq did it. We went to war with them. Libya did it. We went to war with them. Somalia did it, we invaded them. Maui did it, well, tried to do it. We had not only invaded them, we took all their gold. They were the third biggest producer of gold. All, every, Syria did it, and we sent our agent provocateurs in there to invade them, but Russia came to their aid. So, does this mean we're going to now find a, have a false flag? And, or no, no, it'll probably be, it's a humanitarian crisis. We've got to do something for them poor people in Venezuela. We're going to send your sons and daughters down there to help this humanitarian crisis. Or maybe they'll just do the same thing you fell for last time and say they got weapons of mass destruction and they're closer than Iraq was, so we've got to go in there too. Whatever they want to sell it to you for. Venezuela is the 11th largest oil producing country in the entire world. It was the third, but it's still the 11th, even though it's in complete economic collapse. And by the way, my friends, I apologize. Last week, I kept saying Argentina because I am studying Argentina and Brazil last, um, uh, in, during the last week because what took place in Venezuela is spreading its way 
through the auspices of the bankers once again into Brazil and Argentina. I had that on my mind, so I apologize to you, but I am speaking of Venezuela here. Um, and this is an interesting article. Venezuela is the 11th largest oil producing country in the entire world and it just announced that it is going to stop using the petrodollar. Most Americans don't even know what the petrodollar is. That's absolutely true. All right. But the government of this oil rich but struggling country is looking for ways to circumvent the U.S. sanctions. It is telling oil traders that it will no longer receive or send payments in dollars. People familiar with the new policy have told the Wall Street Journal. In a nutshell, and this is uh, any country that wants to purchase oil from an oil producing country has to do so in U.S. dollars. Now, we got into that a long time ago, my friends, about how that came into play. We formed OPEC. We, shut, we formed the EPA to shut down domestic oil production here. And it all had to do because there was no longer enough gold or silver to back the dollar. It became a worthless script. Actually, it wasn't worthless to the bankers because it put you in debt. It put, made you a co-surety to the debt, and you didn't even sign any papers. And if you wonder why, go back and watch other shows. We're going to do it quite heavily. How we, we formed the OPA, how Henry Kissinger formed OPEC, how we told Saudi Arabia we would protect them militarily, we would buy their, their oil from them, we would not get involved in their domestic affairs, and they were, they were going to be, uh, through the uh, agreement of the contract, they were going to take a percentage of their profits, which is in the billions and billions, now trillions of dollars, and they were going to buy treasury bonds. That's how Saudi Arabia, and that would keep the facade dollar, the petrodollar, alive. And who paid for all this aspect of the military hardware, of the, of the EPA agencies, of the high gas prices, of the blood of your sons and daughters? You and I would. Who would profit from all this? The banksters, the corporations, the oil companies, and the hierarchy of Saudi Arabia. Okay, my friends, uh, I'm just going to read this real quick. There's a long-standing agreement within all oil exporting nations through OPEC, what I just said. The UK, uh, the UK, for example, cannot simply buy oil from Saudi Arabia by exchanging British pounds. No, they have to use the dollar. See, that was the big thing. If you want to buy and or sell any petroleum products on an international market, you had to use the petrodollar. Notice I didn't say dollar. Notice they even call it the petrodollar. Because it's not a dollar, folks. We don't have dollars anymore. A dollar is 25.8 grains of gold in the 51 ratio of silver. There is no more gold. There is no more silver. That's why we formed OPEC. That's why we formed the EPA. And that's why Saudi Arabia, Japan, and China own all these treasury notes that are indebted to you and the bankers profit from it. I cannot even imagine how they sit there drinking their cognac, snorting their cocaine, and diddling their little boys laughing at you, laughing at me. I, I, I just sit there and I think about these Satanists and, and, and the games they play and how we fall for it time and time and time and time and time and time again at the cost of blood, at the cost of liberty, at the cost of freedoms. It, it, they, they just must urinate themselves or on each other laughing at us. I'm going to stop there. I'm disgusted enough with it. Okay. Anyway, you get the picture? Venezuela said bye-bye to the dollar, petrodollar, because we don't have dollars anymore. And, and let me tell you something, folks. They're not stupid. I'm sure Maduro has created that void already knowing how he's going to fill the void. I'm sure that's already done. And let me tell you how he's going to do it. He'll probably start with using the euro, maybe. But I'll tell you where he's going to end up. He's going to end up with, like the other 54 other nations, he's going to join the BRICS. 
And when he joins the BRICS, he's going to be using a gold-backed denomination, medium of exchange, called the Chinese Riembi. You know it as the yuan. What would you rather have in your pocket, my friends? Would you rather have a medium of exchange that is based or backed, but even partially, by a, a, a medium of exchange backed, like I said, even partially, by gold or silver or debt. Which one would you rather have? The gold and silver or the debt? What do you have in your pocket? Well, if you're an American, you have debt. And if you're an American, you're the co-surety to the debt. You became liable to the debt. And you became liable to the debt on March 9, 1933, the very same day the United States government, USA Incorporated, went insolvent to these banksters. They took all your gold. They took all your silver. They took all your property. And don't say, oh, I own my land. You think you own your land. You think you own your car. You think you own your children. You don't own a thing. The only thing you own is the debt they have placed on your back. That's it. You don't even have the right to know what food you're eating. You don't even have the right to say no if you work in an American Medical Association institution known as hospitals, whether you can take a toxin vaccine or not. Even though you've got to sign waivers to say you won't sue us because we're forcing you to take it. And we stand for this. They're laughing. They're laughing so hard at us. It's ridiculous. So are we going to go to war with Venezuela now? History shows we will. Why? Because we have, with every nation, except for Russia and China, that walked away from the petrodollar. Everyone. And your sons and daughters have bled. You've gone into debt. I just read to you how, you know, big oil, you know, 82.8% of the profits from the Iraqi invasion went to the oil companies. And you got laden with over $4 trillion in debt. And I want you to think about this, my friends. For every single one of them, $4 trillion, for every one of them that are in debt, there is a insurance bond, uh, not insurance bond, excuse me. There is a bond, an interest bond due on it. So you're not only $4 trillion in debt, your prodigy is trillions and trillions of dollars in debt forever under the terms of the Federal Reserve Act. So you keep signing mothers and birth certificates because they need it. You see, they, my friends, they cannot conquer us. They cannot conquer us without our consent. They can't. So it's that Hegelian dialectic again. And instead of doing it by the threat of a gun, which the government's doing now, much more. Oh, by the way, to, to jump around a little bit, talk about a threat of a gun. You see two more Bundy defendants gone free. That's one thing we got to get into on this program. Jury nullification. But do you understand what I'm talking about, my friends? So if you start hearing about Venezuela, these bad people, or they got weapons of mass destruction, and we got to send troops down there because it's a humanitarian crisis, understand the real reason why we've done it, as we did in Syria, as we did in Iraq, as we did in Libya, as we did in Somalia, as we did in multitudes of other countries, it's because the bankers are sending your sons and daughters down there to protect their booty. Henry Kissinger once said, Control people by controlling food. This criminal, John D. Rockefeller. Oh, John D. Rockefeller. I just mentioned the AMA, Medical, Med American Medical Association. Guess what? That was an a, a, a NGO that he set up to take control of medicine in the United States. And not just medicine, but education of medical doctors in the United States. He also financed this man, Mr. Stalin. 
The bankers financed all the criminals, my friends. From Pol Pot to Mao Zedong to, to Hitler to Lenin to Stalin, all of them. There is, uh, Idi Amin was financed by the bankers in Uganda. There is not one dictating criminal in the 20th century that came to fruitation and came to power that was not financed by our sweat equity because of our ignorance and our apathy. And then they send your sons and daughters to go fight them when they lose control of them. Headline. This is from the Daily Mail out of England. The Forgotten Holocaust. How Stalin starved over four million people to death in a grotesque Mossack experiment, which many of Russia still deny. Now, this is the pictures I'm about to show you are all from the Ukraine. And what you've got to understand, my friends, is that in the early 1930s, excuse me, in the early 1930s, Ukraine was the breadbasket of Russia and most of Europe. They literally produced 84% of all the grains in them massive geographical areas. Do you understand what I'm saying? So how is it that Stalin was able to stop the very breadbasket of such a vast geographical area in, one, in little over one year's time to the tune of four million deaths, not to mention the recurring deaths that took place from illness and, and like. How? Henry Kissinger summed it up with that, didn't he? To control a, na a people, you control the food. To control a nation, you control oil. Okay, my friends, um, for the sake of uh, time, I am just going to show you some pictures. Uh, this is all uh, from 1932 to 1933. And um, I want you to look at these people, my friends. Of course, you remember the, the pictures of the children we had in America in 1933 also. These are pictures. Now, mind you that these people aren't shocked by this. You see the little boy just walking along. The other guy just got his hands in his pocket. The fellow behind him sitting on it, what existence he has left. He's just... Another day at the park. These other two to, to the left are just walking by, not even looking at this unfortunate fella. This was commonplace, is what my point is. There's no shock on these people's faces. There's no horror. There's no one trying to give aid. This is commonplace in their lives, my friends. Look at the infrastructure in the background. It's tattered. It's worn. Look at the clothing on the people. It's tattered. It's worn. Look at these pictures. This is what happens, my friends, when you let despots control your government. Look at these animals. Now understand that horses in 1932 and 33 were the prime means of traveling, of agriculture. They didn't have tractors. They took care of their animals because that was their means of travel, production, and the like. Look at the condition of these animals. Look at these starving people, my friends. 
Now, if you look at these clothing, these people are draped in a lot of clothes, which tells me it's fall and or winter, or late sp early spring, I should say. Look at the mill in the background. It's, day it's daylight. Do you see any industry taking place in them smokestacks? Do you see any heat being produced out of the smokestacks at the houses? No. They were in complete economic collapse. Why? It wasn't the manipulation of the currency, my friends. It was the control of the food. Another reason why this weather modification is so important to these banksters. A hungry people, my friends, will do anything you ask of them if you promise to feed them. I've seen it. I spent a short time in Cambodia as a Marine in the, in the uh, 70s. And I've seen what starving people, desperate people, do. I've looked into their swollen, sunken eyes, their hollowed eyes, their desperate eyes with their bludgeoned belly. I shouldn't say bludgeoned, I should say expanded. And it wasn't because they were fat. It was because their bodies start eating, each other, eating itself. And things take place with the GI tracts that explode, if you would, not explode, but they, they expand. Give me control of a nation's currency. I care not who makes its laws. Amshar Rothschild. That is absolutely true and correct. Control people by controlling food. Heinz Kissinger. That is absolutely correct. Control nations by controlling oil. Heinz Kissinger. That is absolutely correct. And them are the three mechanisms that these bankers have used in history, used today, and will continue to use in the future. Unless we as a people, we as a nation, say no more, we do our research, we understand our money and banking system, and we change it. Otherwise, we were going to be Venezuela, we are going to be subjected to all the difficult, sim different symmetrical and asymmetrical warfare that they want to, wish to present upon us. Look at the vaccines. Look at the food. Look at the fluoride in the water. Look at the weather modification with the chemtrails and the hot programs. Or you've been declared the enemy, my friends. The 1933 Trading with the Enemies Act, enemy. The definition of enemy in that document is, and we've read this to you verbatim from four different sources, citizens of the United States or those under the jurisdiction of the United States. And understand, my friends, that the United States is nothing more than an insolvent corporation answering to the creditors and the creditors and international banksters. Look at these poor people, my friends. This was the breadbasket of Europe and old Russia. One year, one year's time, a little over a year, about 16 months, it took him to kill over 4 million people by controlling the food supply. Look at these people. Notice who's caught in the, the tot here. I mean, tot in the cot, I'm sorry. They don't have any more animals left, my friends. They've either eaten them or they died from malnutrition, something like what's taking place in Venezuela today. We reported to you how the people went into the zoos and raided the zoos. They ate the caged animals. You can't find a city pigeon in Venezuela. You can't find a dog or a cat in Venezuela. Look at these people, these poor children. 
And who was responsible for every bit of this? The international bankers, Rockefeller, the Rothschilds, the Warburgs, because they, my friends, not only financed Lenin with the Bolshevik Revolution, they financed Stalin. Look at these poor children. Now, what do you notice here? Why do you think all these sacks of grain are here? I'll tell you why. See the guy in the uniform? These are the laborers, the starving laborers, that probably get just enough to keep them alive a day to do the labor. And then we have the gentleman in uniform to safeguard it for the government. Look at the clothing on this poor child. Obviously, she's cold. Look at the condition that ignorance and apathy will bring your children if we allow this to continue. Folks, you keep thinking it won't happen here. I got news for you. It has happened here. It is happening here. Take a good look at this child because this will be the children of America in the future if we as a people do not educate ourselves and get active. And folks, all we have to do is educate ourselves because once you understand what's really going on, once you have a taste of where they're bringing us, once you see from their white papers what they're doing and what they've done, once you understand real history, you will get active because you'll be scared. I'm scared. I'm scared for the future of my nation. I'm scared for the future of humanity for that matter, and that's why I go out of my way. We go out of our way me in front of the camera and the other people behind the camera, every single week we're here. Why? Because we're scared for the future of our people. And we're doing all we can to help you understand what is at stake. So you keep watching the ball game, you keep watching Britney Spears, whoever the, whoever the highlight is today. Understand that there are cynical, evil well-coordinated, well-orchestrated, well-financed forces at hand to dumb you down, to make you apathetic, to make you sick, to starve you, to put you in, into a state of no hope, that we have no hope what we can do. You know, there's an interesting concept by Sun Tzu, the Chinese philosopher, talking about warfare. The biggest battle is in the minds, it correlates to the hearts, and I'm paraphrasing here. But he said, if you wish to destroy your enemy without a, a drop of blood being shed, take away your enemy's hope. If your enemy has no hope, he will not come to the engagement. You're the enemy, I'm the enemy, the declared enemy from the congressional record, from the legislative page, from the law library of Congress, recognized throughout the different courts. We are the enemy of the insolvent corporation, USA Incorporated. Everything they do, they're in control of. Every time we try to gain control of all our own lives, they're not going to leave us alone. As I said to you last week, yeah, the old paraphrase about there's two different types of people, you know, takers and givers. Well, takers work for the government, givers produce. The only thing government produces is bureaucracy. But I add to that equation. There are other two kinds of people of another part of the equation. There are those that wish to be left alone, and there are those that will not leave you alone. And the people who work for the government, every aspect of it, are the ones that wish to not leave you alone. 
Wake up, America. It's close at hand. Understand, as Churchill said, if we do not know our history, we are bound to repeat it. My friends, we're very thankful you took the time from your busy day to watch this program. We always close in asking you to seek truth, obtain knowledge, and manifest kindness to your fellow man. And we always close in reminding you that your government is your responsibility. We thank you for watching. Read between the lines. Got the green.